Shalom to you, dear brothers and sisters, and members of the Peniel congregation, wherever you are. I want to continue our short series which speaks about the dynamics of our walk with the Lord as believers. We spoke about this, that the believer's life, who believes in God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Yeshua, the Messiah, is a life that walks in that narrow path that leads to heaven. It is like a walk of a person that the light in his life is getting to be greater. It's compared to the sunrise at the beginning of a new day. At the beginning, it's at just at the horizon, and then the light gets greater and greater. In the afternoon, it's a very strong light that shines from the sun. The light of the Yeshua it shines within us, and it grows within us and through us. It's a process of growth. And we also saw that there are those who get stuck in their place. In Hebrews, we saw those who, after many years, were still infants and they should have grown. But then we saw those who have made progress, like the congregation Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2. Yeshua says to them, you've fallen away from your first love. Come back and then you can also go forward and then go back. And we also saw people who came to faith and recognized the Messiah Yeshua, like in Peter, and then afterwards they went back to the sin of this world, like a pig that goes comes up out of washing and then goes back to rolling in the mud, or like a dog that throws up and then goes back and licks up his vomit. And so we saw all of these examples. And of course, we want to be of those who grow and those who make go forward in the grace of God and His grace who wants to work in us. But we then need to give the place to cooperate. So now I want to continue on with the positive side of going forward, advancing, and to see what else it says for us. Where else will it lead us? So let's turn today to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and read verses 17 and 18. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. So, on the face of it, we see that we have here two important points. The first point that the Word of God shines light on us for us is the Holy Spirit, the need of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord. And we'll talk about a little bit more about that in a minute. But the second thing that we see is that where the Spirit is, is working, we then are being transformed from glory to glory. It's a process in which we are being transformed slowly, slowly into the image of Yeshua. That is something that in itself is wonderful. It's encouraging. It's challenging. It gives us a direction in life. And we want to go forward and we want to be like Yeshua. What does it mean? So let's get a little bit more deeply into this. Therefore, first off, we read in verse 17, that the Lord is the Spirit. Yeshua lives within us, in His Spirit, in the Holy Spirit that He had sent. Yeshua went up to heaven. He's on the right hand of the Father. And He sent the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is within us because our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, He is one God. Just like it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So there's unity between the good Spirit and the Father. And Yeshua can say, it's my spirit that I sent, because me and my Father, we are one. And so that is the spirit of the Lord. And it says for us here, that the Lord is the spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, in our hearts. So there, there is liberty, there is freedom. Liberty is freedom. So what kind of freedom is he speaking about, and why? What is the thing that most binds people up in our lives? Sin. Sin that destroys people, that enslaves them, 
that even if it tempts us with a fleeting pleasures, but then there's emptiness and there's darkness that remains. And people that are stuck in this world, in the end, they are miserable. And we see it when they come out of it. They come to faith. They tell how I was there, down in that darkness, like the prodigal son who took his father's money and he wasted it with prostitutes and with friends and with parties and drinking. And after that, it was all finished. Nothing was left. And he is miserable. And that's, I've heard testimonies of people like that who came out of the world. They come to faith. and Or the opposite. In one of the news reports, it was really lately that a yoga teacher who, in her youth, she was the queen of her class and a peak of success. And she has a circle of people who appreciate her, who follow her. But she was felt alone. And one day, she took her car and went to the desert and drove and crashed off a cliff and committed suicide. And people who knew her were surprised. What? She was strong. She was an instructor. She was a person who people appreciated and respected. People who have not God. They don't have peace with God. They don't have that forgiveness. They don't have that atonement. They don't have the love of God. That God receives them. That they are acceptable to God. So what do they have in life? What do they have? First off, they look another thing, another entertainment, another money, more money, or other kinds of new property, new things. They put their mind in these temporary things. No. The need that we have within us, our spiritual need inside, is for these these material things cannot fill it. Only God. So when the Spirit of God is within us, we know that we are forgiven. We receive the freedom, the liberty from this burden of sin. And slowly, slowly, the joy and the peace that grow within our hearts, they fill our hearts and they give us freedom, liberty, freedom to love others, freedom to create, freedom to do, freedom to encourage. Yeshua said it's better to give than to receive. So then this passage begins then when God put the emphasis on His Holy Spirit and the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And that work of the Holy Spirit and this liberty is the climate. That's the environment that in it we are changed and transformed from glory to glory. And how does this all happen? We'll continue on and read the next verse, verse 18, the the next reading, next time. But in the meantime, I want to bless you, dear brothers and sisters, and also friends abroad, friends of the congregation abroad. May God fill all of us with His Holy Spirit and give us all the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, the peace and the joy and the love towards God, peace with God, and also towards our family, and also towards our brothers and sisters in Messiah, and towards the non-believing society that's around us. May His light continue to shine through us. I love you, and may God bless you. Bye.